सी आई ई टी एन सी ई आर टी प्रेजेंट नेशनल करिकुलम फ्रेमवर्क टू थाउजेंड ट्वेंटी थ्री पार्ट सी स्कूल सब्जेक्ट पेज नंबर थ्री ट्वेंटी चैप्टर फाइव सोशल साइंस एजुकेशन सोशल साइंस इज द सिस्टमैटिक एंड साइंटिफिक स्टडी ऑफ ह्यूमन सोसाइटीज दैट एक्सप्लोर द रिलेशनशिप बिटवीन द इंडिविजुअल and society social institutions and organizations in this ncf the term social science is also used to include those branches of the humanities that involve the more qualitative study of human society culture thoughts creations development and actions in the past and present The purpose of social science education is to help students learn about the society in which they live, how members of their society live, interact, behave, eat, speak, and in what languages express themselves through art, the traditions they follow, the clothes they wear, and their aspirations. It also helps students in understanding their origins their ancestors their culture their neighbors and consequently themselves social science education introduces students to people whom they have never met places that they have never been stories that they have never heard and new ideas that they have never conceived thereby expanding their horizons and opening their minds to new possibilities finally social science education helps students develop pride in their culture and their country with a forward looking spirit to continuously improve as individuals as a society and as a nation there is a picture given here in this picture few students are studying a world map page number 321 as a subject at school social science draws significantly from the disciplines of history geography civics political science and economics and also where relevant from psychology anthropology philosophy law and others thereby aiming to provide an interdisciplinary understanding The approach to the study of social science in this NCF is to develop an interdisciplinary perspective rooted in disciplinary knowledge that enhances the student's understanding of social processes in a holistic manner. Social science is first studied as a separate subject in the middle stage. In this stage, the study of social science will be largely thematic. each of these themes would be studied through an integrated view of history geography political science economics and other disciplines where relevant such as psychology philosophy anthropology and sociology also each such theme with this integrated multidisciplinary perspective will be studied at the local regional national and global levels in grades 9 and 10 of the secondary stage the study of social science is organized within the disciplines of history geography political science and economics thus the concepts and content are chosen to develop an in-depth understanding in that discipline including its methods However at the level of detail of these particular concepts or topics a complete picture is attempted by ensuring that the same concept is also considered through the lenses of other disciplines in an integrated manner this approach builds disciplinary depth while ensuring a holistic interdisciplinary perspective in grades 11 and 12 students have the option to go deeper 
into disciplines that they choose from the range of disciplines that constitute the social sciences such as history geography political science philosophy economics psychology sociology and anthropology grades 11 and 12 are dealt with in part c chapter 10 box 51 while the entire ncf needs to be used and implemented in an integrated manner it is important that this chapter be read along with part a of the ncf document the curricular aims and the learning standards in this chapter are in continuity with part a chapter 3 similarly the sections on pedagogy content assessment and tlms in this chapter must be read with the corresponding chapters and sections in part a because what is common across curricular areas on these matters has been pulled together in the relevant sections of part a to avoid repetition across multiple chapters thus reading this chapter in isolation will convey an incomplete picture page number 322 section 5.1 aims social science plays an important role in developing an integrated understanding of the human world and its functioning including its deep interrelationships with nature and the environment in the quest to continuously improve as a society in the study of this subject students learn methods of observing and interpreting the human world which helps them lead their own lives and also contribute as members of a society social science also helps in developing some of the values and dispositions that are essential for democratic participation building and sustaining cooperation among communities that strive for peace harmony equity and justice for all social science education in schools must aim to achieve a understanding how society functions learning social science leads to the understanding of how societies function through the interplay of historical geographical social cultural economic political environmental and other factors students will develop an awareness and understanding of 1 continuity and change in human civilization and their causes and effects 2 the interaction between nature natural resources and human beings including the spatial and temporal patterns arising out of this interaction its effect on human life and the impact of human activity on nature 3 the commonness and diversity among people and their practices in different societies regions and cultures within societies 4 various social political and economic institutions their origin functioning and transformations over time till today b capacities for inquiry in social science students will develop capacities for carrying out and applying the methods of inquiry available in social science including 1 sourcing verifying and cross validating evidence through multiple sources interpreting this evidence and constructing coherent narratives 2 recognizing features of the physical world spatial and temporal patterns map reading analysis and interpretation of various interconnected concepts and processes 3 creative and critical thinking forming informed opinions demonstrating logical decision making and having a problem solving disposition 4 collecting organizing analyzing and representing data and information on various issues historical geographical cultural economic environmental and socio political 5 proposing meaningful responses to contemporary concerns of society 
based on these methods of inquiry. Page number 323. C. Responsible Human Beings and Contributing Citizens, NEP 2020 states, The purpose of the education system is to develop good human beings capable of rational thought and action, possessing compassion and empathy, courage and resilience, scientific temper and creative imagination, with sound ethical moorings and values. It aims at producing engaged, productive and contributing citizens for building an equitable, inclusive and plural society as envisaged by our constitution. NEP 2020 pages 4 to 5 Social science can play a unique role within the school curriculum to enable the knowledge, capacities and values and dispositions that underpin this purpose of education as committed to in NEP. Section 5.2 Nature of Knowledge The nature of knowledge of social sciences may be understood as follows. A. Evidence-based, empirical and verifiable. Valid knowledge in and of social science relies on accepted norms of inquiry and verifiability of evidence, not on speculation. Verifiability is based on the corroboration of multiple sources of evidence which are available in many forms including oral narratives and traditions, performing and visual arts, literature, other texts, archaeological and other artefacts, physical and biological features, scientific investigations and experiments, both natural and conducted such as astronomy-related, climatic and seismic phenomena or carbon dating and numerical and qualitative data on the lives of people. Multiple sources are ideally used to cross-validate evidence to establish something as true and valid. Corroborating evidence from multiple sources leads to better explanations and conclusions. B. Social science is often interpretive. While based on verifiable evidence, social science is nevertheless interpretive. Given the dynamism and complexity of human nature and cultures and the real constraints in securing comprehensive, complete evidence for all aspects and for every level of any phenomenon, the same set of evidence often lends itself to different interpretations. The strength of growing evidence may eventually support a particular interpretation. However, this interpretive nature does not make social science unreliable or arbitrary in its claims, but rather a dynamic subject that constantly evolves and responds to the latest challenges and evidence. C. Social science is value-laden. Since social science is interpretive, it also reflects the values and the worldview of the interpreter. This manifests not only in different interpretations and explanations that can be drawn from the same set of verified evidence, but sometimes also in methodological issues, such as the weight to be given to various kinds of sources of evidence, example, surveys versus experiments, and which questions to seek answers to. Thus, in the study of social science as a subject, it is important to include a plurality of plausible interpretations all arrived at with diligent and rigorous methods and also an expanding range of questions with nuances. The awareness of students of this particular nature of social science must be developed and therefore a disposition of continuous inquiry tentative explanations and conclusions and avoidance of subjective value judgments should be encouraged. Page number 324 D. Social Inquiry Knowledge in social science helps us understand the relationships and interaction between social processes and social facts. That means values, cultural norms, social structures. 
This also enables a sense of social inquiry and criticality. In other words, seeking answers to questions and issues that could help improve society. The awareness of students of this particular nature of social science also must be developed. E. Social science is multidisciplinary and requires an interdisciplinary approach. It is a complex task to understand human beings and human societies, and this requires an interdisciplinary approach informed by and based on multiple disciplines such as geography, political science, history, economics, sociology, anthropology, psychology, philosophy, culture, which includes literature, art, traditions, and more. For practical purposes, up to grade 10, the first four of these disciplines would mostly constitute the subject of social science while not missing the relevant and important contributions of the other disciplines. Geography studies the physical features of an area and human relationships with their natural environment. History traces the journey of continuity and change from the past to the present of human life and the major events that have impacted society and culture. Political science deals with the socio-political existence of human beings and economics analyzes economic activity and its impact on social and behavioral changes of human beings. F. Social science is sensitive to context. Socio-cultural beliefs and values are subject to their context, including historical, cultural, geographical, economic and political. To understand any society holistically, social science evaluates the events and issues in keeping with the context of that time and space. Section 5.3 Current Challenges Social science teaching and learning faces a few challenges in schools at present. The NCF attempts to address these systematically. Some of the key issues are as follows. A. Social science is usually taught as a subject that focuses predominantly on memorization of facts, such as dates in history, names of geographical features across the globe, the listing of fundamental rights and duties, and naming of economic institutions. The effort to understand, discuss, and appreciate concepts is often missing in social science classrooms. This, in turn, makes students lose interest in the subject. B. Social science is often divided into watertight compartments of history, geography, political science and economics, too early on in an extremely rigid manner. Students are rarely exposed to comprehensive engagement with any particular social phenomenon and usually learn to look at it through the lens of only one discipline. Therefore, the interdisciplinary thinking that students require to understand society is often not developed. C. Information in the chapters is too often transacted in the classroom with little or no connection to the life of students. Since the subject is not made relevant or interesting to the students, it often ends up being boring, passive or unrelatable. D. The content in some books, including textbooks, is sometimes not based on verified evidence and arises from inadequate inquiry, lopsided interpretations, entrenched stereotypes or specific biases. Page number 325 Section 5.4 Learning Standards Social science as a separate subject begins at the middle stage. It builds on the capacities built in the preparatory stage, primarily through the study of the subject, the world around us. In the middle stage, these general capacities of observation, data collection and the basic understanding of social life are further sharpened to enable methods of inquiry and understanding of conceptual structures within social science. While in the middle stage, understanding and capacities are developed in an integrated manner, 
in the secondary stage that is grades 9 and 10 students more formally enter the disciplinary domains of history geography economics and political science this enables them to develop disciplinary rigor in both the methods and concepts of social science students get adequate exposure to social science as a discipline and with this understanding they can make informed choices about pursuing social science as a specialization in grades 11 and 12 5.4.1 curricular goals and competencies 5.4.1.1 middle stage there is a table given here on the left side we have cg on the right side we have explanation row 1 cg1 comprehends and interprets sources related to different aspects of human life and makes meaningful interpretations c1.1 collects and interprets multiple sources of information primary and secondary to understand the historical cultural geographical and socio-political aspects of human life c1.2 represents and analyzes data related to various aspects of human life given in the form of text tables charts diagrams and maps row 2 CG2 explores the process of continuity and change in human civilizations through specific examples from their context and a few historical episodes. C2.1 explains and analyzes major changes in the past and their impact on society. C2.2 recognizes elements of the continued prevalence of certain beliefs, relationships, practices and activities in human society notwithstanding major changes in society row 3 cg3 draws connections between the causes and effects of different social and historical events or episodes and connects them with the overall impact on human life c3.1 analyzes the effect of various changes in early human society from nomadism to settled life and early civilization such as the emergence of agriculture changes in food habits basic technologies like construction transport pottery metallurgy and changes in human habitation family structures and relationships the nature of work people's socio cultural beliefs and concepts over time example ahimsa and the fallout of major wars or invasions that significantly impacted human societies c3.2 identifies the reasons behind harmony and conflict among social groups and communities in their region and in other parts of the world and their impact on human societies page 326 row 4 cg4 understands the functioning of social cultural and political institutions and their impact on society and the way individuals and collectives shape these institutions c4.1 collects organizes and interprets information about various social cultural economic and political institutions in their vicinity and region and realizes its significance for human society C4.2 assesses the influence of social, cultural and political institutions on an individual or group or community or society in general. Row 5 CG5 understands various forms of inequality and prejudice in society from those prevalent in a family to those at a community or regional or national level and also the initiatives and efforts at various levels to address these issues c5.1 identifies explains and raises questions about different norms of inequality prejudice and discrimination prevailing in one's own family locality region and national and global levels 
C 5.2 identifies, explains and appreciates efforts being made at different levels through various including social, cultural, economic and political mechanisms and institutions and what individuals can do to address these to ensure equity, inclusion and justice. Row 6. CG6 understands the spatial distribution of resources from local to global, their conservation, the interdependence between natural phenomena and human life and their environmental and other implications. C6.1 explains key natural phenomena such as climate, weather, ocean cycles, soil formation, the flow of rivers and how they are spatially distributed. C6.2 identifies the distribution of resources such as water, agriculture, raw materials and services across geographies. C6.3 analyzes Indian perspectives on and efforts towards conservation and sustainability in society and advocates the importance of the same and what more needs to be done in these directions including in the context of global climate change. C6.4 correlates the existence of different patterns of livelihoods with different types of landforms availability of resources and climatic conditions and changes in local, regional, national and global contexts. Row 7 CG7 appreciates the importance and meaning of being Indian, that is Bharatiya, by understanding A. India's rich past and present including its glorious cultural unity in diversity, pluralism, heritage, traditions, literature, art, architecture, philosophy, medicine, science and other contributions to humanity and b. other integrating factors despite the geographical diversity of India. C7.1 explains India's unity in diversity by recognizing commonalities in its rich and diverse cultural elements, languages, art, philosophical ideas, values, clothing, cuisines, traditions, festivals, trade, commerce and health practices including Ayurveda and Yoga. C. 7.2 discovers the topographical diversity of the Indian landmass from the semi-arid zone in the west and the areas of heavy rains in the north east on the long coastal areas in the south and the snow-clad mountains in the north as well as the rich biodiversity of the country. C7.3 appreciates India's tradition of inclusion across communities and social groups and its influence in vast parts of the world through its cultural elements. Page number 327 Row 8 CG 8 understands and appreciates the process of development of the Constitution of India and upholds its importance to promote democratic values in Indian society. C8.1 understands the need for a constitution for any country during the last few centuries, especially in a country such as India and its deeper objectives. C8.2 explains the process of formation of the Indian constitution and understands the ideas and ideals of the Indian national movement enshrined in it as well as those drawn from India's civilizational heritage. C8.3 explains the working of the three tiers of local self-government and appreciates its significance in upholding democracy at the grassroot level. Row 9, CG9 understands the processes of economic activities that is production and consumption, trade and commerce. C9.1 explains the key elements of trade and commerce that is commodity, production, consumption and capital and its impact on individual life and society. CG10 understands and appreciates the contributions of India through history and in all the present times to the overall field of social science, including the different disciplines that constitute it. C10.1 
knows and explains the significant contributions of India to all matters, that is, concepts, explanation, and methods studied within the curriculum in an integrated manner, along with the particular matter, illustratively understands the strengths of India's democratic traditions through its history. Row 11, CG 11. In the curricular goals, CG 1 to CG 10, there is a basic and adequate understanding of the history, geography and culture of the locality, region and country. Note, competencies for this curricular goal have already been incorporated under CG 1 to CG 10. Page 328 5.4.1.2 Secondary Stage Grades 9 and 10 Row 1 CG 1 understands and analyzes the important phases in Indian history and draws insights to understand present-day India. C1.1 explains historical events and processes using different types of sources with specific examples from Indian history. C1.2 explains and analyzes the chronology of human life on the Indian subcontinent from prehistory to its civilizational beginnings and beyond, and its relations with other civilizations over time, such as those in Mesopotamia, Greece, Central Asia, China, Southeast Asia, Arabia, and Eastern Africa. C1.3 traces aspects of continuity and change in different phases of history across the Indian subcontinent, including cultural trends, social and religious trends and reforms, and economic and political transformations. C1.4 explains the growth of new indigenous ideas across India, including in mathematics, philosophy, science and technology, medicine, architecture, agriculture, literature and art, and social science such as Zero and the Indian Number System, Ahimsa, the six systems of Indian philosophy, Ayurveda, Yoga, the 22 Shrutis of Indian music, horticulture, use of herbs and spices, etymology, meters and grammar, and how they affected the course of Indian and world history. Row 2, CG2, analyzes the important phases in world history and draws insights to understand the present-day world. C2.1 explains historical events and processes with different types of sources with specific examples from world history. C2.2 explains and analyzes the chronology of human life from its beginnings to nomadism to settled life and other phases of human civilization. C. 2.3 traces aspects of continuity and change in different phases of world history, including cultural trends, social and religious reforms, and economic and political transformations. C2.4 explains the growth of new ideas and practices across the world, including humanism, mercantilism, industrialization, scientific developments and explorations, imperialism, colonialism, the rise of new nation states across the world, and various technologies, including the most current, and how they affected the course of world history. C. 2.5 recognizes the various practices that arose such as those in C. 2.4 and came to be condemned later on such as racism, slavery, colonial invasions, conquests and plunder, genocides, exclusion of women from democratic and other institutions, all of which have also impacted the course of world history and have left unhealed wounds. Row 3, CG3, understands the idea of a nation and the emergence of the modern Indian nation. C3.1 analyzes 
the meaning of nation and how the concept evolved over time across the world and in the specific context of India, including its roots in the rich civilizational history of the Indian subcontinent. C. 3.2 identifies and analyzes important phases of the Indian national freedom struggle against British colonial rule with special reference to the movement led by Mahatma Gandhi and other important figures as well as those that led to independence and understands the specific Indian concepts, values and methods such as Swaraj, Swadeshi, passive resistance, fight for dharma, self-sacrifice, ahimsa that played a part in achieving independence. Page 329 Row 4, CG4 Develops an understanding of the interrelationship between human beings and their physical environment and how that influences the livelihoods, culture and the biodiversity of the region. C4.1 Locates physiographic regions of India and the climatic zones of the world on a globe or map. C4.2 Explains important geographical concepts characteristics of key landforms, their origin and other physical factors of a region. C. 4.3 draws interlinkages between various components of the physical environment such as climate and relief, climate and vegetation, vegetation and wildlife. C. 4.4 analyzes and evaluates the interrelationship between the natural environment and human beings and their cultures across regions and, in the case of India, the special environmental ethos that resulted in practices of nature conservation. C4.5 critically evaluates the impact of human interventions on the environment including climate change, pollution, shortages of natural resources, particularly water, and loss of biodiversity, identifies practices that have led to these environmental crises and the measures that must be taken to reverse them. C4.6 develops sensitivity towards the judicious use of natural resources by individuals, societies and nations and suggests measures for their conservation. Row 5 CG5 understands the Indian constitution and explores the essence of Indian democracy and the characteristics of a democratic government. C5.1 understands that the Indian constitution draws from the great cultural heritage and common aspirations of the Indian nation and recalls India's early experiments with democracy, assemblies in Mahajanapads, kingdoms and empires at several levels of the society, guilds, sangs and gunners, village councils and committees, Uthira Merur inscriptions. C 5.2 appreciates fundamental constitutional values and identifies their significance for the prosperity of the Indian nation. C 5.3 explains that fundamental rights are the most basic human rights and they flourish when people also perform their fundamental duties. C 5.4 analyzes the basic features of a democracy and democratic government and its history in India and across the world and compares this form of government with other forms of government. C 5.5 analyzes the critical role of non-state and non-market participants in the functioning of a democratic government and society such as the media, civil society, socio-religious institutions and community institutions. Page number 330 Row 6 CG6 understands and analyzes social, cultural and political life in India over time as well as the underlying historical Indian ethos and philosophy of unity in diversity and recognizes challenges faced in these areas in the past and present and the efforts 
being made to address them. C6.1 understands how the Indian ethos and the cultural integration across India did not attempt uniformity but respected and promoted a rich diversity in Indian society and how this harmonization and unity in diversity with a historical respect for all cultures, women have counted among India's great strengths by promoting peaceful coexistence. C6.2 understands that despite C6.1 forms of inequality, injustice and discrimination have occurred in different sections of society at different times due to internal as well as outside forces such as colonization, leading to political, social and cultural efforts, struggles, movements and mechanisms at various levels towards equity, inclusion, justice and harmony with varying outcomes and degrees of success. C6.3 analyzes aspects of differential treatment or discrimination that may exist in Indian society based on Example, socio-cultural background, region, language spoken and what individuals and societies can do to eradicate such differential treatment. C6.4 understands that a progressive society and nation such as India is one that recognizes not only its civilizational strengths but also its socio-economic, cultural and political challenges and continuously makes efforts to address those challenges to become ever more prosperous, inclusive, just and harmonious. Row 7 CG7 develops an understanding of the economy of a nation with specific reference to India. C7.1 defines key features of the economy such as production, distribution, demand, supply, trade and commerce and factors that influence these aspects, including technology. C7.2 evaluates the importance of the three sectors of production, primary, secondary and tertiary in any country's economy, especially India. C7.3 distinguishes between unorganized and organized sectors of the economy and their role in production for the local market in small, medium and large-scale production centers or industries and recognizes the special importance of the so-called unorganized sector in Indian economy and its connections with the self-organizing features of Indian society. C7.4 traces the beginning and importance of large-scale trade and commerce, including e-commerce, between one country and another, the key items of trade in the beginning and the changes from time to time. Row 8, CG8, evaluates the economic development of a country in terms of its impact on the lives of its people and nature. C8.1 gathers, comprehends and analyzes data related to income, capital, poverty and employment in one's locality, region and at the national level. C8.2 understands and analyzes the concepts and practice of the range of economic systems from free market to entirely state-controlled markets. C8.3 understands these features in the context of ancient India with its thriving trade, both internal and external, and its well-established trade practices and networks, business conventions and diverse industries, all of which made India one of the world's leading economies up to the colonial period. C8.4 describes India's recent path towards again becoming one of the three largest economies of the world and how individuals can contribute to this economic progress. C8.5 appreciates the connections between economic development and the environment and the broader indicators of societal well-being beyond GDP growth and income. Page number 331 Row 9, CG9 
understands and appreciates the contribution of India through history and present times to the overall field of social science and the disciplines that constitute it. C9.1 knows and explains the significant contributions of India to all matters, concepts, explanations, methods studied within the curriculum in an integrated manner. Section 5.5 Content As mentioned in the beginning, the approach, principles and methods of selecting content have commonalities across subjects. Those have been discussed in Part A, Chapter 3, in Section 3.2 of this document. This section focuses only on what is most essential to education of social science in schools. Hence, it will be useful to read this section along with the above-mentioned section. 5.5.1 Principles of Content Selection The content selection in social science must fulfill the curricular goals, account for the nature of knowledge and should systematically address the current challenges of social science teaching and learning. These considerations inform the principles below, which should be used while selecting the content. A. Content must be adequate to develop relevant knowledge and capacities. The topics chosen should together be able to help achieve the relevant knowledge and capacity goals of the curriculum. At the same time, there must not be content overload, which has been a significant cause of ineffective social science teaching and learning. This Balance of having appropriate amount of content is one of the key challenges in developing social science curricula. B. Content must be based on verified evidence and narratives. A good social science study of any concept or event requires engaging with evidence from a range of sources, references and consequent interpretations and narratives. The range of what is admissible evidence for social sciences will draw from the socio-cultural contexts of India and from multiple pieces of evidence verified rigorously from various sources. It should give a sampling of differing interpretations or narratives if justified by verified evidence of a single event or phenomenon. For example, good understanding of the Gandhian philosophy of non-violence should be accomplished through the readings of multiple writers or the usefulness and limits of markets should be seen from varied perspectives. C. Content must be interdisciplinary in approach. Social science by its very nature is an interdisciplinary subject. The discipline-wise division of history, geography, political science and economics and others such as anthropology, philosophy, psychology and sociology cannot be seen as separate areas in isolation. None of these disciplines can be taught or understood without referring to another. For example, the concept of India's cultural unity in diversity cannot be taught without introducing the student to India's geographical unity in diversity or to its shared philosophical and political concepts. Students should learn to investigate a concept from multidimensional and cross-disciplinary perspectives to develop an expansive view. Page number 332 D. Concepts must be built from the simple to the complex. The content in social science should be organized with simple concepts leading to more complex ones enabling the construction of whole meaning with building blocks. This must be done progressively, including by considering the developmental trajectory of cognitive capacities of students. For example, for teaching historical inquiry in the middle stage, the content would first focus on the identification and differentiation of sources of information or evidence taking a local case study as starting point where possible. As a second step, students should interpret the evidence to draw meaning out of it. Third, where possible, 
they should attempt to collect and analyze evidence from multiple sources for a single event, engaging in discussions if such evidence at times appear to point to differing conclusions. And finally, where possible, they should do a comparative analysis between two or more similar events based on findings made through multiple sources. Such an exercise can be done at a basic level to familiarize the student with the methodology in a light way. E. Content to progress from local to global. As much as possible, conceptual understanding should start from the local context. For example, understanding geography is best achieved by first engaging with local terrain, streams, lowlands, uplands in the locality and then moving to features of the regional and national terrains. The same method is applicable to history and to other areas of social science. F. Content to include real and diverse experiences of people. As social science deals with human beings and society, the study is incomplete with just theories and concepts. Without references to the real world, experiences of people, past or present, concepts do not come to life. For example, the concept of an uprising against colonial rule cannot be grasped without an appreciation for the courage of the people through a few first-hand accounts or testimonies or discrimination and efforts to address it cannot be taught without introducing the students to accounts of people who have faced it personally and those who have been helped by measures taken at various levels. Real experiential accounts also help develop values and dispositions such as empathy, sensitivity and pride in our heritage. G. Content must enable development of capacities. Social science aims at developing decision-making and problem-solving capacities in the social context to enhance social, cultural and environmental harmony which involves the interpretation of facts, relying on evidence and connecting concepts to form rational and forward-looking opinions. The content in social science should not merely present facts but also help develop these capacities and enable inference, analysis and a grasp of the complex, integrated nature of human life and society while being open to other perspectives. H. Content must enable the development of values and dispositions. The choice of content in social science and its tone of presentation should have both implicit and explicit influence on the values and dispositions of students. While the overall content must be valid and adequately representative of a range of perspectives, it should also be deeply informed by the values and dispositions that it will foster. Page number 333 5.5.2 Choice of Topics and Optimal Curricular Load The topics chosen to be studied as content must together enable the learning of relevant curricular goals of knowledge and capacity development. In social science, perhaps more than any other subject, such a consideration leads to massive content overload. This is understandable because the scope and range of the subject is the entire range of human activity, phenomena and society. However, this content overload is self-defeating. It leads to students finding social science boring with little relevance to their lives and a mere memorization of facts and figures. It also leaves no room for development of needful capacities. Therefore, one of the most important matters in social science curricula is to have just the adequate amount of content. The key matter is how can we arrive at this adequate content? This NCF suggests the following basic principles to be used for designing such content. A. Topics should be selected for development of capacities. The focus must be on the selection of topics and also of pedagogy, assessment 
and timetable space. That would help develop capacities such as sourcing evidence, analysis and framing questions. This is because no amount of content can be enough to build adequate knowledge in social science. However, if the capacities are developed, students can start gathering and developing their own knowledge base. B. Address all relevant aspects. Choice of topics must cover all key relevant aspects of social science, including economic activity, cultural norms and historical causes of phenomenon. All or even a significant part of knowledge must not be attempted to be covered, but all aspects should be touched upon so that students can subsequently use their capacities to continually build their knowledge base. C. Make things interesting. Topics chosen must make study of social science interesting and also demonstrate its usefulness in the lives of people. This is what will motivate students to develop their capacities and use them. A variety of pedagogical tools must be deployed for the purpose. Section 5.6.1 5.5.3 Rootedness in India While the entire social science curriculum would be strongly rooted in India from the local to the national level, CG10 that is middle stage and CG9 that is secondary stage requires that the students must learn and understand the significant contribution of India and Indians to the concepts and methods in social science and the disciplines within as these are studied. 5.5.4 Content for Middle Stage 5.5.4.1 Summary of Approach A. Based on Themes In the middle stage, the approach is largely based on studying themes. Themes form the content of study. Topics are subparts of the themes which may be used for particular purposes of drawing boundaries for a particular discussion or inquiry, each grade would have all the chosen themes. Page number 334 B. Study themes from all perspectives. For all themes or the topics within, study must happen from the angles and lenses of all relevant disciplines. This must cover historical geographical, economic and political science perspectives as also anthropological, philosophical, psychological, sociological, cultural and other perspectives. It is particularly important to note that 1. Such study should be undertaken through real-life, relatable questions and not be classified into disciplines. The disciplinary angles must be embedded within the questions or study. The students would not be told or instructed that such and such question is from such and such discipline. 2. One question may embed and involve multiple disciplines. C. All themes should be studied at four levels in each grade, local, regional, national and global. At each level, the questions or study should be from the entire range of lenses from various disciplines. D. Teaching learning materials including textbooks, pedagogy, assessment and timetable must support this entire approach. 5.5.4.2 Themes for Holistic Real Life Perspective Building To develop an interdisciplinary holistic perspective in the middle stage, the study of social science is largely based on themes rather than disciplines. In essence, a theme is any rich and complex human phenomenon that pulls together the lenses of multiple disciplines which in turn help obtain a good understanding of the phenomenon. For example, the concepts of continuity and change, governance or migration are the sort of ideas that are so rich in nuances and so complex in multiple ways that a reasonable understanding requires the lenses of history, geography, political science, economics and also philosophy, psychology, anthropology and more. Such concepts can be used as themes in the study of social science. A. 
it is useful and important to note that themes are likely to have related but different characteristics across different levels of human aggregation implying that any of these themes when studied at the very local community level as compared to the regional or national or global level will have particular and different characteristics and dynamics for example the political and economic aspects of governance are vastly different at the local community level and at the national level b therefore the themes should be studied at all four levels local regional national and global with appropriate weightage given to each level in terms of the proportion of content needless to say the study of all the themes at every level will be carried out with the same integrated multidisciplinary lens c within each of the themes and for any of its constituent matters which may be called topics study must be done using the lenses of all relevant disciplines the list of themes in 5.5.4.5 is useful for such an approach for studying social science it needs to be noted that while this list of themes is useful and important it is not comprehensive and curriculum developers may choose other themes as well the key criteria for choosing the themes are described here page number 335 5.5.4.3 criteria for choosing themes here is a set of criteria that can be used to choose themes these have been used to select the themes used in the document other themes may be chosen by curriculum developers using these criteria a the human phenomenon or idea or concept being chosen as a theme must have the complexity that requires multiple disciplines for its study for example the flow of rivers is not a phenomenon requiring multiple disciplines to study as it is primarily a matter of geography however rivers and human life needs the perspectives of multiple disciplines and therefore could be a suitable theme within this approach b the matter being chosen as a theme must be relatable in the context of the immediate environment of the student this is not only important to develop an understanding of one's own community and locality but it is also important pedagogically to have a relatable understanding because students learn more deeply when they can relate to things with their own lives see at the same time the matter for a theme must be such that it has a regional national and global dimension and relevance and it is not limited to only one or two levels d the overall set of themes chosen should enable the development of a syllabus and content that is sufficient to achieve the curricular goals in that class and of that stage 5.5.4.4 themes cutting across four levels local regional national and global or international the themes should span from local to regional to country and then the world themes should be equally relevant and useful at all these levels this approach helps make the learning of social science observable real world relevant interesting and connected to day to day occurrences for middle stage students drawing them into thinking and talking about these occurrences while connecting them to the more expansive world this would also give students a sense of their location in the world and the interconnections of matters between different levels of human aggregation for each of the grades 6 to 8 the relative proportion of the content and of time table space of the different levels are mentioned below within each level the themes should have roughly equal proportion of content these are not tight rules but directional guidance and the exact proportions may vary reasonably based on other considerations a content for the local level would be 20% of the social science curriculum 
students will explore various facets of their locality in terms of historical context, geographical variations, and its socio-political, cultural, and economic life in an integrated manner. This will be done through collecting information or data from multiple sources, comparing data, making meaning out of it, doing analysis, and learning how social scientists build knowledge about a society based on empirical evidence. This local level should 1. Build familiarity with the methods relevant to social science and develop the related capacities. 2. Make the subject relatable to real life. Page number 336 B. Content for the regional level would be 30%. The understanding and capacities developed by the local level content would be built upon to deal with content at the regional level. In this, a deeper interdisciplinary perspective would be acquired by the students by identifying interconnections, similarities and differences between their locality and the region. The region must be chosen thoughtfully. It must of course be the region around the local area, but it may be a part of the state where that locality is, or multiple states, or the entire state itself. C. Content for the national level would be 30%. Students are expected to learn the national context through a similar approach, including active engagement with secondary sources. This content could include a general survey of the relevant Indian history and geography, the unity in diversity of our people and the richness of our cultural heritage and the relevant concepts of Indian ethos must also be introduced and studied here. D. Content for the global level would be 20%. An understanding of the culture and society of other countries would help students widen their worldview. Students can build a comparative understanding of life in other countries in relation to their own. This would lead to a sense of pluralism and appreciation of various cultures around the world. A comprehensive understanding of any three countries that meet the following or similar criteria may be chosen. 1. The three countries must be from different continents with different socio-cultural and civilizational histories. 2. One country that has geographical challenges and has gone through rapid growth after struggling through challenging times in its history. Example, Japan, South Korea. 3. One country that has geographical diversity, has been a colony and has struggled through foreign rule and internal difficulties. Example, South Africa, Nigeria. 4. One country that has grown rapidly and is influential in the global economy with multi-ethnic composition. Example, the United States of America, Australia, Germany. Along with other TLM, content for the local level should be in the form of workbooks specifically designed such that teachers themselves should be able to use it for their locality. On the other hand, the regional, national and global level content may be covered through textbooks. 5.5.4.5 Themes used in this document The themes chosen for illustration using the criteria mentioned earlier in section 5.5.4.2 are People and Cultures, Livelihoods of People, human environment interconnectedness and interaction, and democracy and governance. A brief description for each theme in the form of some key questions that form the rationale is given below. Under each theme, illustrative topics are also given to help curriculum, syllabus and content developers relate to this approach. A. People and Cultures the first step of social science is to study the people around us and what shapes their lives. There are multiple factors, geographical, historical, economic, cultural, psychological and political that enable and influence building a society 
and result in certain socio-cultural practices and norms in that society. These norms not only influence individuals' lives, but also explain the functioning of group dynamics within a society. Page number 337 They enable us to understand the factors that influence coming together of people or even the differences that may exist. The broader areas which this theme would cover are what factors influence the coming together of people, trade, ideas, socio-cultural influences, people movements, whether due to pilgrimages or deliberate or forced migrations, across time and their current practices, what has changed and what has remained constant over time, what are the political, economic, education of people, clothing, livelihood and social cultural that is language, festivals, practices, components of cultures and what are shared. What positive effect does cultural interaction have? Answers to these questions cannot be sought in isolation and hence the other themes must also be studied in conjunction. Illustratively working on this theme for grade 6, the topics may cover the following content at local and regional level. 1. Topics that can be covered at local level 1. What kind of changes have happened in the cultural life of the family and community in the last 3 to 4 decades and what has continued? What are the reasons behind these changes and continuity? Such a topic could lead to a discussion of the role and importance of the family unit in Indian society. 2. What kinds of differences are observed in the beliefs and practices of members of the family? What is the basis of these differences? 3. What has been the migration pattern in the family over three to four decades? Who has migrated and where? How has it impacted the basic structure of the family? 2. Topics that can be covered at regional level. 4. What are the major characteristics of the culture of the people of one's own region? 5. What were the cultural practices of the people of the region in ancient times? What has continued over this period of time? 6. Which types of festivals are prominent in the region? What is the historical significance? What is the importance of festivals in bringing people together from different sections of society? B. Livelihoods of people Livelihoods remain at the centre of day-to-day -day activities of people and are also drivers of the cycles of interdependence in society. This in turn proceeds in defining the market dynamics, feeding the loop of demand and supply. For example, what goods and services does a society produce? Who controls the wealth and resources of a society? How and why have these changes occurred across time? What is the nature of the different markets, example, heart, bazaar and mandi? Is it conceptually relevant to put melas or fairs as a form of market in India? How does the market influence the lives and occupations of the people? What and how are natural resources used and what is their effect on nature? What kind of governmental matters are linked to livelihood? This theme thus aims at enabling students to understand and interpret the dynamic relationship that the livelihoods of people have with the types of structures and institutions in the world and their evolution. Finally, all of this must be understood in the context of the culture, aspirations of people, political environment and more. Page number 338 Working on this theme for grade 8, the topics may cover the following content at regional and national levels. 1. Topics that can be covered at regional level. 1. What do we mean by cottage, small-scale and large-scale industries? How do geographical conditions define the possibilities of small-scale and large-scale industries in the region? 2. What is the share of small-scale and large-scale industries in economy of the region? 
how does it impact the standard of people's lives 3 how has industrial development taken place in the region in the last 30 40 years and what are the major reasons behind this change how have traditional ways of conducting business been affected by this change 4 what is the role of the state government in addressing the unemployment and poverty in the region 2 topics that can be covered at national levels 1 how do the climatic zones affect people's lives and play a role in determining their livelihood in a particular zone 2 which type of agricultural practices and local industries develop in different climatic zones how does it influence the livelihood of people 3 what type of power sharing mechanisms and control over resources have developed over time in different regions of the country 4 what are the impacts of globalization on people's lives what kinds of changes can be seen in occupations and livelihood patterns 5 which types of occupations have emerged over a period of time what is its impact on society what is the role of different sections of society in economic activities c human environment interconnectedness and interaction individuals are shaped by and are an integral part of their social and physical environment everything that happens in society is influenced by its surroundings and its features from what one wears to what one eats to what livelihoods thrive on it is therefore important to know how do humans adjust to the climate and terrain in which they live how have changes in the natural world forced people to change their behavior and practices what positive and negative changes have people made to their environment how has all this changed with time what cultural factors have played a role and how how are collective issues resolved these questions are some of the key components for understanding the human environment interaction working on this theme for grade 6 the topics may cover the following content at local and regional level one topics that can be covered at local level 1 what are the key physical features of one's locality is it a plain mountainous plateau or coastal area how do the physical features of a place influence the living condition of its inhabitants 2 understanding the relation between crop patterns in one's locality and the physical features of that place page number 339 3 how are land and resources distributed among the people in the locality what are the reasons behind the disparity in the distribution of resources if any for example in access to safe drinking water and school education 4 what is a map what are the key components of a map what different kinds of maps are commonly made and consulted what is the significance of a map in the lives of people how do we make a map of one's own locality two topics that can be covered at regional level one what are the key physical features of a region what are the climatic conditions of the region and how do they shape the lives of people in terms of occupation and livelihood two what are the natural resources found in the region three what are the major crops and horticulture of the region what are the major flora and fauna of the region and their interconnectedness with the lives and cultures of the people in the region four how does the environment affect people's behavior such as language food clothing and what is the kind of diversity found in different regions d democracy and governance having understood human settlement and the multiple factors influencing the way people live a certain kind of social and political order is required for a stable society governance attempts to ensure social order in society along with taking care of the availability of resources and services 
for each member in the society. Democratic governance is one such form of a political structure that aims towards the inclusive and harmonious coexistence of diverse people in the society. Governance is shaped by the past experiences of the people. It is influenced by and influences social and cultural forces and trends and is deeply interconnected with economic well-being and the terrain of the place being governed. This theme focuses on understanding democracy and governance and how they have changed over time and how this change has influenced and been influenced by technology and the economy. Illustratively, working on this theme for grade 8, the topics may cover the following content at national and global level. 1. Topics that can be covered at national level. 1. What is the process of government formation at union level? What are the roles and responsibilities of union government? What is the relationship with people? 2. How did India emerge as a modern democratic state? What are the values and principles that bind us together in the historical process? How does the constitution of India address the aspirations of people and respects, communities, beliefs and practices? 3. What are the types of challenges that have been faced by Indian societies across periods of time? What are the processes, policies and mechanisms developed by the government over the period of time to deal with these challenges? 4. What types of challenges are being faced by Indian democracy in recent times? How does the government tackle these challenges to bring social and economic prosperity in society? Page number 340 2. Topics that can be covered at global level 1. What are the key features of US democracy? How is it different from Indian democracy? 2. How has democracy evolved in the US from its first freedom struggle to the civil war of the 1860s? 3. What are the major issues of American society and how has economic development shaped its society? 5.5.5 Content for Secondary Stage Grades 9 and 10 In grades 9 and 10 of the secondary stage, the study of social science is organized within the disciplines of history, geography, political science and economics. To operationalize the curriculum for the learning standards, the topics would be chosen in a manner as to develop depth in that discipline, including its methods. Equally, the learning standards, content and pedagogy will also ensure that at the level of detail, the actual study of these particular concepts or matters, a complete picture is built by ensuring consideration from the lenses of other disciplines including anthropology, sociology, philosophy, psychology, linguistics and others. This approach will build disciplinary depth alongside interdisciplinary holistic perspectives from granular details to an integrated worldview and the capacities to grow this worldview. The content in history should guide the student to understand the evolution of human society. Content must be aimed at developing a holistic view of the human past by interpreting primary and secondary sources. The content must be based on different sources and is expected to help students arrive at various plausible interpretations backed by cross-validated evidence about a particular event or period. It must cover important phases of the past which have shaped the present. In addition, the content must familiarize the student with and explain the concept through multiple valid narratives. For example, in grade 9, while covering the topic nomadism to settled life in India and the world, it may cover core historical questions along with the related questions from other disciplines such as a. 
Questions related to history: One, how did early humans live across the world? Which types of tools did they use? Two, how did early humans transform from being hunter-gatherers to living in a settled agrarian society? Three, what type of continuity and changes can be seen in the social structure from the beginning over different phases of history? Four, how did the cultures of different regions interact? What are some items that cultures have passed on to each other over different phases of history? B. Questions related to geography. One. How did early humans adjust to the climate and terrain where they lived? What were the geographical features which favored the early agrarian settlements? Page number three forty one. Two. How did the agrarian societies change their natural world? Three. What positive and negative changes occurred to the environment with settling down of societies? C. Questions related to political science. One. What were the major factors behind one society heading their way to conquer the land and people of another society? How did one society gain control over others? How did a dominating society control and rule its subjects? What were the effects? on conquered societies 2 how did the group or person in power keep or lose their power d questions related to economics 1 what were the types of changes seen in the production of goods and services with the shift from hunting and gathering to agrarian and settled society 2 who had the control over the wealth and resources in nomadic society Which types of new economic activities emerged in agrarian society, and how did it change the relationship of humans with nature? Certain issues of history specific to the Indian context will need to be understood and discussed, often in an open-ended manner, as they may not always lead to clear-cut answers, but always insisting on clarity of the concepts involved. For example, one. What are the different ideas of a nation? Two. How does the ancient Indian concept of desh, rashtra, mandal compare with the modern Indian state? Three. In the context of India, how relevant are the concepts of a nation or of a civilization? What role does cultural continuity play in the concept of civilization? Four. How to distinguish between political integration and cultural integration? in the course of indian history 5 in what ways did the british invasion and colonization destroy india's pre-colonial industrial and economic strength and its indigenous educational and administrative systems in what ways did it cause or greatly compound the severity of famines how did it affect the vibrancy of india's rich culture including india's languages literature art philosophy and heritage altogether how did the british rulers finding in the 17th century a culturally and economically prosperous india leave it two centuries later in a weakened and impoverished condition how has india recovered and still is recovering from this colonial experience and exploitation economically and culturally and what should india do to ensure its cultural that is in terms of languages literature art philosophy heritage and economic reemergence in geography the content must focus on highlighting the interrelationship of human beings with their geographical environment and other life forms concepts highlighting the interdependence between humans and nature need to be at the core the connection between various geographical phenomena and their socio-cultural effects must also be included knowing about for example various climatic zones across the world in grade 10 questions from both geography and other disciplines may be explored to understand the human environment relationship it can be done in the following manner page number 342 a questions related to geography 1 What are the main factors that determine the formation of climatic zones on earth? 2. What are the characteristics and distribution of tropical, 
subtropical, temperate and polar climatic zones and how does this shape people's lives and cultures? 3. Discuss the role of latitude in shaping climatic zones and provide examples of how it affects temperature and precipitation patterns. 4. How does human activity contribute to climate change? Provide specific examples of human activities that release greenhouse gases into the atmosphere. b. Questions related to history questions. 1. How have climatic or environmental changes influenced the rise and fall of civilizations throughout history? Explain how climatic changes were initially mostly natural while environmental changes were either natural example caused by a long drought or anthropogenic example caused by over exploitation of natural resources in a given region provide examples of historical events where climatic or environmental factors played a significant role two how have human societies adapted to or mitigated the impacts of climatic zones throughout history discuss specific strategies or practices employed by civilizations in response to changing climatic conditions. Include cases where attempts at mitigation were unsuccessful, leading, for instance, to major social or political reorganization or upheaval. C. Questions related to political science. 1. How does climate change influence international relations and diplomacy. Discuss the political dimensions of climate change negotiations, agreements and conflicts over resources. 2. Explain how political decisions and policies can shape the adaptation and mitigation strategies related to climatic zones. Provide examples of government policies or initiatives that address climate changes and its impacts. D. Questions related to economics. 1. Explain the economic implications of climatic zones on agriculture, tourism and natural resource-based industries. Provide examples of how climatic conditions affect economic activities in different regions. 2. Discuss the role of climate change in shaping global trade patterns and economic relationships between countries. How do changing climatic conditions impact international trade and economic agreements? In political science, the content should include an in-depth understanding of the subject of political science in India's history from the Earthshastra of Kautilya to the modern constitution of India. It should include democracy, its various definitions in ancient and modern times, and democratic life as the main concepts, while also familiarizing students with other kinds of political structures and lives across the world. It should include the current day, post-independence working of the government in India through its network of social and political institutions. It should also include an understanding of inequality and discrimination in society and its reasons alongside the progress that has been made and the ways and efforts that have been made towards inclusion and justice and its successes, failures and challenges. Students are expected to explore probable solutions to these challenges including what people can do individually to address these issues. Page number 343 the importance of constitutional values and our democratic commitment to ensure a dignified life for all in society should be highlighted. Along with it, the presence of other disciplines would ensure that the student understands an issue in an in-depth manner. For example, while studying about the constitutional provisions for ensuring equality in India, in grade 10, the following questions across disciplines may be dealt with. A. Questions related to political science. 1. What are the varying inequalities, social disparities and harmful social practices prevalent in society 
based on identity. What are the reasons behind these? 2. What have been the measures in our country to address these issues and how successful have we become? 3. What are the challenges in front of us for addressing such issues as a nation? b. Questions related to economics 1. Is there any relationship between social inequalities and disparities and economic status? 2. What could be the constitutional ways to address these gaps, which can lead to improvement in the economic status of these sections of society? 3. Does the identity of a person influence the nature of livelihood and occupations they practice? c. Questions related to history. What Indian philosophical, historical or ethical concepts have sought to counter inequities? What have been the major successes of these concepts in Indian society? 2. Despite these successes, what are the causes of some of the inequities that currently exist in Indian society? 3. What have been some of the measures that have been taken and can be taken by individuals, society and the nation to address these issues? d. Questions related to geography 1. What is the habitation structure of societies, that is rural or urban, where identity-based clusters are formed? In economics, an introductory understanding of economic activities and the interrelatedness of these activities with human life, the market and money should be included. The content areas encourage the students to understand, observe and interpret economic life in their immediate environment. With this, they would be able to make sense of the economy in India and in the global world, aligning with the interdisciplinary approach Understanding economics through the lens of other disciplines would add to the knowledge of the student. Illustratively, while studying about the three sectors that is primary, secondary and tertiary and organised and unorganised sector in grade 9, questions from core economics and other disciplines can be explored in the following manner. Page number 344 A. Questions related to economics 1. What do we understand by primary, secondary and tertiary sectors of an economy? 2. How is each sector dependent on each other, contributing equally for running of the economy? 3. What is the difference between organised and unorganised sectors? b. Questions related to history 1. What are the changes that have happened over time in trade patterns will cover not only how initial trade was between primary products but also how industrial revolution changed things at large 2 how did the difference between organized and unorganized sectors emerge historically what has been and still is the special importance in india of the unorganized sector both socially and economically c Questions related to political science. 1. What is the role of the government to regulate and secure the running of the market? 2. How does the government protect people in the unorganized sector through social welfare schemes? d. Questions related to geography. 1. How does a product reach you? 2. What are trade routes and how are they decided? 3. How does geography influence the nature of occupation of the people. 5.5.6 Materials and Resources for the Content A social science classroom should include a variety of TLMs in addition to the textbook. Students must be exposed to social and cultural phenomena across time and space through sources such as local literature, folk songs, stories from one's region, ancient monuments and documents, magazines and newspapers, films and documentaries, autobiographies, biographies, memoirs and travelogues, audiovisual aids and maps of all kinds. 
they must make sense of their own lives the society they live in and its institutions a textbooks social science textbooks should be made interactive by including reflective prompts for the students these prompts must help with connecting concepts with the current lives of the students and suggest activities they can do to explore the ideas in their immediate surroundings textbooks must have a large number of illustrations and activities that make students think deeply the textbooks must refer to some original sources that students should examine also by design they must use and link multiple other learning resources the current sharp distinction between textbooks and workbooks must be avoided b digital material content for social science should not be restricted only to textual forms students can engage with a concept through other mediums that is songs movies documentaries audio clips such diversity in content makes the class enjoyable through an enriched medium of learning unfamiliar content becomes easier to understand this way and it becomes possible to give students access to a distant world that is in time and space virtually page number 345 c maps and atlases a geographical basis for understanding any social event makes the learning of social science rooted in the physical world a social science classroom should always have maps globe and atlases available for students to refer to the collection of maps should have physical maps political maps along with thematic maps that is population density distribution of minerals these should be of the locality region country and the world d literature works of literature fictional and non fictional are a very good source for a social science classroom literature that is representative of identities cultures phases of history personalities and forms such as historical accounts diary records and folk tales can be used to the advantage of the class oral traditions and narratives can be another rich form of literature e sources from the visual and performing arts art forms which depict culture and traditions are good sources of information and conversation in a social science classroom these would enrich class discussions in addition field visits or digital content can be used to introduce the students to the arts related to social science ideas teachers voice 5.5 one past present polity i teach social science to 36 students in grade 6 it is easier to teach this subject if students are able to relate the content to their experiences or observations from life around them and establish connections between topics of different disciplines somehow understanding the interconnectedness of various parts of the subject makes it even more interesting hence when we were working on a topic of history in which we were discussing about various sources in history and how we use them to understand the past and present and the concept of continuity and change i planned a small discussion activity keeping in mind the following objectives a the students should be able to interpret the sources keeping in mind the context of the society the source represents b the students should be able to build a comparative understanding about past and the present and identify what things have continued from the past and what has changed with these objectives in mind i gave a small excerpt about the administrative system of gram sabha in chola period in india the excerpt highlights the qualification a person must have to be a member of the gram sabha along with the excerpt a set of questions were also given the students 
first had to work on those questions individually and then a classroom discussion was done around the questions page number 346 the excerpt who could be a member of a sabha the uttara merur inscription lays down all those who wish to become members of the sabha should be owners of land from which land revenue is collected they should have their own homes they should be between 35 and 70 years of age they should have knowledge of the vedas they should be well versed in administrative matters and honest if any one has been a member of any committee in the last 3 years he cannot become a member of another committee any one who has not submitted his accounts and those of his relatives cannot contest the elections set of questions a the record mentions the qualifications of the members of the gram sabha why do you think such expectations were posed for a member to qualify for gram sabha b there is no mention of electing common people and women as members what would have been the reason for this c interact with the members of your gram panchayat and find out what kind of qualifications are currently prescribed for the election of members d which of these qualifications are such that cannot be applied to today's gram sabha members and why this activity took 3 periods to complete in the first period i discussed what the students have to do and then gave time to read and respond to the first two questions in the next period a few members from gram panchayat were invited for a discussion in the classroom in which the students had to come prepared for their questions about the present structure and rules of gram sabha this discussion helped the students to discover the answer for the third and fourth questions it was only in the third period that an elaborate class discussion was held and a shared understanding was built we could draw some interpretations as a team about the gram sabha system in the chola period and how the concept of gram sabha has still continued but the qualification expectations for joining the gram sabha have changed section 5.6 pedagogy and assessment the approach principles and methods of pedagogy and assessment has commonalities across subjects those have been discussed in part a chapter 3 section 3.3 and section 3.4 of this document this section focuses only on what is most essential for social science and humanities hence it will be used to read this section along with the above mentioned section page number 347 5.6.1 pedagogy for social science social science is often taught as a fixed set of facts without an understanding of how interpretations play a role in its construction this has pushed students towards memorizing facts and figures from a textbook which is not an actual learning of social science a social science classroom must be participatory and interactive in nature it is only when students are allowed to immerse themselves in the process of social science thinking that they learn the subject better 5.6.1.1 pedagogical considerations the following pedagogical considerations should be kept in mind while planning for social science classes a classroom transactions should help students engage with the method of doing social science so that learners can appreciate the methods for knowledge creation in social science for instance students may be encouraged to notice patterns in the distribution of different forms of government such as democracies monarchies and dictatorships across the globe and propose reasons that is historical geographical socio political and economic for the existence of those patterns b classroom teaching should inculcate an awareness and appreciation of normative concerns students should be given opportunities to reflect on various social and environmental issues in their own environment this should lead to thinking and discussing of meaningful responses 
to these challenges. C. Multidisciplinary thinking should be encouraged and supported to ensure that students develop a holistic and integrated understanding of concepts as they appear in society. Any event in history needs to be interpreted in the socio-political or economic contexts of its origin. Any geographical phenomena should be evaluated from its impact on space and human lives and its influence on the economy and society. Similarly, any economic concept needs to be understood from its historical and socio-political contexts. D. A social science classroom should be a place for contesting ideas, debating and arguing with empathy and care. Students must be encouraged to share their diverse experiences and reasoning without the fear of being judged or ridiculed. The teacher must refrain from imposing their own beliefs and biases on the students and should train students towards looking at one issue from several viewpoints. The entire pedagogy in a social science classroom should be an attempt to reveal newer dimensions of social reality and work towards creating self-awareness and introspection among teachers and students. E. Facts and concepts in social science should be made relevant to the students' contexts and experiences. Such sharing and interactions must be respectful of the cultural and socio-economic differences and multiple perspectives among students. F. Concepts in social science need to be clarified with adequate depth and rigour. In a social science classroom, adequate time and attention should be given to concept formation and clarity. For example, students need to understand the processes of weathering and erosion to see their impact on topography and human civilization. They must engage with the meaning of different types of sources of evidence to frame meaningful interpretations of historical events and develop a comprehensive understanding of concepts of plurality and democracy to appreciate the values enshrined in the constitution and those stressed upon in NEP 2020. The overall classroom environment should encourage academic rigour in acquiring knowledge. Page number 348 G. The opportunity to engage with various social, political and environmental matters through investigating and interpreting multiple sources of evidence available such as documentaries, literature, that is books, local stories and travelogues, newspaper reports and relevant films should be undertaken. Selecting materials that are relatable to students and help in developing curiosity about the discipline should be prioritized. At the same time, care should be taken to ensure that materials are taken from reliable sources of information and do not depict biases for or against a particular thought, philosophy, group or people. H. Authentic tasks or performance-based tasks such as project-based learning activities and assignments should be incorporated to give learners an opportunity to develop different types of capacities such as surveying, data analysis, problem solving and collaborative skills to validate and investigate their assumptions and beliefs. 5.6.1.2 Pedagogical Strategies to design lessons around these considerations, there are many strategies that teachers can deploy. Illustratively, A. Inquiry Inquiry-based methods help students understand how social scientists generate knowledge. For instance, students can make and test hypotheses about factors that influence migration in their locality or region the genesis of various settlement patterns in their region, why specific types of occupations are more prevalent in specific regions, and so on. B. Issues-based learning Issues-based learning can be a conducive tool for acquainting students with various aspects of 
social realities, integrating perspectives from different disciplines in investigating the causes of problems and thinking about relevant social action. As a subject addressing normative concerns, it is also vital that students learn much of the social science content by engaging with real issues in their immediate or related context. For instance, students may consider the problem of drinking water shortage in their area, which may involve engaging with questions such as what are the available sources of water? How does water consumption differ across different parts of the region or locality? Are there wastages that can be avoided? How is water being made accessible to all sections of society? Is there unequal distribution? What steps are being taken to purify water? How is it being made available to the poorer sections of society? C. Conversations, discussions and debates Conversations are extremely vital in a social science classroom. These conversations should lead to focused discussions on concepts, ideas, belief systems and value claims. Sometimes these discussions may turn into debates in the classroom. It is important to encourage such debates as it provides students with the opportunity to put forth their perspectives, resolve conflicts, iron out contradictory ideas and learn from each other. However, care must be taken that such discussions and debates do not hurt the sentiments of any social group. Some common topics for discussion could be on climate change, diversity in clothing and types of food as per historical and geographical reasons and practicing democratic processes in schools. Page number 349 D. Role plays and simulations. Role plays and simulations may help students explore decision making processes and find means for conflict resolution. For instance, role plays of the Gram Panchayat or corporation may be used as a vehicle to explain the functioning of a democratic institution. E. Community service and field excursions. Community service is yet another engaging strategy in a social science classroom. It not only involves concrete experiences for learning concepts from the curriculum but also enables students to develop the desired values. Students may take up various projects to work with local government agencies to acquire first-hand experience of issues and work with people in need. Similarly, field excursions are meaningful ways of engaging with the content. Example, nature walks, heritage walks, food walks and visits to police stations, museums, post offices, planetariums and government and digital archives. F. Reflective essays. Students can write reflective essays on various topics related to the curriculum. These essays can also be used by teachers to assess the extent to which students have learnt the desired concepts and skills. For instance, a reflective essay topic could be How will dams transform agricultural productivity in India? What are the issues and opportunities of linking rivers? What sustainable agricultural strategies could a region adopt if its main river turns seasonal or dries up? Or is waste management and disposal the sole responsibility of municipalities and other government agencies? G. Project work. Effective social science teaching happens when students collaborate for a project or a specific task. These could be conducting surveys and interviews. Example, household surveys, interviews with stakeholders of the society such as village sarpanch, drawing a map of their classroom, investigating historical sources in their region, tabulating the types of bazaars or markets, 
Such projects should be collaboratively designed along with students with sufficient time given to collect data, analyze it and present it in the classroom. H. Some specific opportunities for projects to create models and artifacts. Students should be given opportunities where they can apply their knowledge to create models and artifacts. These could be in the form of poster making, collections, that is, old coins, newspapers, stamps, types of rocks, leaves, flowers, photographs, pamphlets, models, that is, two dimensional or three dimensional, example, monuments, volcanoes, still scenes, videos of rallies, heart bazaars, book fairs, or any social events in their surroundings. 5.6.2 Assessment in Social Science Some of the key principles having particular relevance to social science. A. Students must be assessed for their understanding of core ideas, facts and concepts in social sciences and their ability to demonstrate an integrated understanding of how society functions through an interplay of historical, geographical, social, cultural, economic, political and other factors. The ability to look forward and think out possible strategies to tackle current or future social, political, environmental issues should also be evaluated, not for the effectiveness of those proposed strategies which often cannot be assessed but for the thinking processes the students engage in and their use of a range of materials factors. B. They should be assessed on the skills and dispositions that foster inquiry in social sciences. Example, sourcing and interpreting evidence, tracing continuity and change, recognizing spatial patterns, respect for diversity. Page number 350 C. Students must be assessed through a variety of ways, example, answering questions using reasoning and evidence, conducting field surveys, map reading and interpretation, developing geographical models, participating in debates and discussions. A few teacher voices below illustrate assessment samples for social science. Teacher's Voice 5.61 Different Types of Farming I teach Grade 7. I wanted to assess my students' understanding of the difference between types of farming practiced in India. Usually, I would ask my students to simply state the features of subsistence farming commercial farming, plantation farming and shifting cultivation and their key differences. Both questions can be answered using rote memory. I tried something different this time. The question below is directly related to their understanding of types of farming, their differences and how they appear in real-life situations. Read the information below and answer the question. Meena and Ravi are friends. Their families practice farming in the following ways. Please read below. There is a table given here with two columns. The first column is about Meena. 1. Owner of one hectare of land and grows rice also works as a labourer on someone else's land. 2. All farming activities are done manually by Meena and her family members. 3. Yield from her land is low. 4. Whatever rice is grown is consumed by her and her family members. The second column is about Ravi. 1. Owner of 5 hectares of land and grows rice. 2. Most of the farming activities are done with the help of machines. 3. Uses good quality seeds and fertilizers and the yield from the land is high. 4 takes his produce or rice to the wholesale market and gets a good price for selling them.
identify the type of farming practiced by Meena and Ravi from the options given A. Meena practices commercial farming while Ravi practices subsistence farming. B. Meena practices subsistence farming while Ravi practices plantation farming. C. Meena practices shifting cultivation while Ravi practices commercial farming. D. Meena practices subsistence farming while Ravi practices commercial farming. E. Both Meena and Ravi practice commercial farming. Page number 351 Teacher's Voice 5.62 Applying Constitutional Provisions I teach Grade 8. I wanted to assess my students' ability to apply their understanding of constitutional provisions in an unfamiliar situation. Students tend to rote memorize and reproduce the conditions for contesting elections as seen in textbooks. This question presents a real-life situation where students must apply their knowledge. Read the following passage carefully. Ravi is 24 years old and comes from a poor family. He is a graduate and a citizen of India. He does not hold an office of profit under the government of India or a state government. He is physically and mentally fit and is planning to contest in the Lok Sabha elections. He filed his nomination papers for the election. However, his application has been rejected. From the above passage, why do you think Ravi's candidature was rejected? A. He comes from a poor family. B. He is just a graduate. C. He is 24 years old. D. He does not hold any office of profit. C. Is the right answer. Teacher's Voice 5.63 Field Survey Knowing Your Local History I teach Grade 9. I find field surveys very useful for a comprehensive assessment of engaging with the history of one's locality and using the process of inquiry in social science. The following survey enables the students to acquire first-hand experience using skills like observing, recording, collecting sources, documenting, comparing, evaluating and drawing conclusions. Working in groups also nurtures skills of communication, collaboration and teamwork. Activity I used the following instructions to describe the field survey tasks to my students. I used the following instructions to describe the field survey tasks to my students. A. Identify at least two popular historical sites in your village or town. Example, temple, mosque, church, gurdwara, well, bavar or bavari, palace, ruins, other places of historical importance. B. Collect information about these two sites using the following sources. 1. Speak to at least two members from your family or neighborhood about these sites. When was it built? What was it used for? Is there anything special about this site? Page number 352 And so on. 2. Visit these two sites in groups of four. Observe and record the following. Shape and form of the structure, type of materials used, anything special or peculiar about the site, example inscriptions, carvings or folk tales. C. After collecting information, I asked students to prepare a project report in the following way. Project title. Use any imaginative title as per your group's choice. Sites visited. You can provide photographs or sketches of the sites along with description. What did you learn about these two sites from the people you spoke to and your visit? Site 1. Blank. Site 2. Blank. What does this tell you about the history of your locality? Write down at least three conclusions based on the information collected. Write any funny incident or story or fact that you learnt about this site which is memorable to your group. 
I used the following rubrics to grade my students' performance. There is a table given here. This table has four columns. Criteria, Grade A, Grade B, Grade C. Row 1. Followed appropriate survey process. Grade A. Information collected from at least four sources. All suggested questions from the task were answered in depth. Responses were documented neatly. Student added more questions to get in-depth understanding of the sites. Grade B. Information collected from at least three sources. Attempted to answer all questions from the task. Responses from survey were sketchy in few places. No new questions were added by the group. Grade C. Information collected from one or two sources. Details from the survey were inadequate to present a complete picture of the sites visited. Row 2. Quality of project. Grade A. Project title was catchy or creative. Complete description of the sites visited using multiple evidence such as sketches, photographs, maps, anecdotes. History of the two sites was adequately constructed using multiple evidence from the survey. Personal anecdotes or reflections were included in the project. Grade B. Project title was clear. Description of the two sites using one or two evidence. History of the sites was attempted but the narrative lacked coherence and completeness. Personal anecdotes were missing. Grade C. Project title was clear. Descriptions of the sites and evidence were inadequate. Conclusions about the history of the place were missing. You were just listening to the National Curriculum Framework 2023. This is brought to you by CIET and CERT, New Delhi, India.